Welcome to Seniors Count. I'm your host, Tula Mall. On our show, we believe that you are the foundation on which Boston was built. So our goal is to connect you to resources, benefits, and information to enhance your life. Thank you for joining us. Today, my guest is Megan Carroll. She is the Executive Director of the Irish Pastoral Center in Dorchester. Welcome to the show, Megan. Thank you, Tula. Thank, Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. We're so glad to have you. So why don't you start by telling us uh, what is the Irish Pastoral Center? We are a social services nonprofit organization in uh, Dorchester, Massachusetts, and we provide services to the immigrant community primarily from Ireland, but we don't turn anyone away. Okay. When was this uh, organization founded? 1987. Oh. It was founded by a number of uh, priests and one nun, um, Father Ronigan, um, Father uh, Finn, Father Sullivan, and Sister uh, Veronica Dobson. What was the catalyst for them starting this program? Um, they were noticing, uh, people in the community were really noticing that there was a need for the type of social services that the Irish Pastoral Center provides um, in, in the, primarily the, the young immigrants that were coming in, but also as the years went on, then the, the, um, you know, the elderly. people aged, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, well, do you have any sense of, um, I guess, the, the, the range of people coming in to your to your to ask for services, so uh, yeah, age range or yeah. age range, like, yeah. Really, it, it's it's pretty much starts around um, employment age, people looking for work. That's part of it, um, but all the way, you know, through you know, eighties, nineties, oh, hundred wow. year old people who who need um, social services or pastoral ministry services. And these are all recent immigrants? No, not all of them. Oh, some okay. of them are first generation. Some are children of first generation. Some are several generations, okay. you know, but they have been living in the same types of situations that their fathers and grandfathers and wow, um, you know, uh, you know, the situations where they they really needed the types of services they haven't gotten out of um, some of the the difficulties. That, um, so even though it was originally uh, founded to serve the immigrant population, it's it's developed into serving all folks, uh, all Irish descendants, including immigrants. It is. It is. Um, primarily, those are the people that really avail themselves of our, of our services as well. Okay. Um, word gets around, and um, we've been able to help people of all ages, all generations. And who funds the Irish Pastoral Center? The, the IPC is funded in part by the Irish government. Oh. Um, a good, good substantial amount comes from the Irish government to take care of their Irish abroad, the nationals mm -hmm. abroad. Um, and then we also have a number of, of corporate foundations, um, charitable trusts and foundations um, that really you know, su support, support and, and give substantial contributions. And people, um, who, benefactors who attend our events uh, to raise money for the different programs as well. Oh. Um can you talk about those events? Can you, I know the center has three great events coming. Or? We just finished three. We have oh, one okay. more. Um, I just started as the new executive director. Congratulations. Thank you. Six months ago. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, that we really needed to do at the beginning was raise some money to be able to continue the, the, to fund the events or the, uh, the programs that we have. So the first six months really were, were building the programs and continuing with the work that was already there, but also bringing in some funding. So we were able to have um, an event for, uh, it was one, one event was a golf tournament mm -hmm. at South Shore Country Club. It, it really targeted a different population than would normally always serve or you know, support the Irish Pastoral Center. We also had a private dinner party with Chef Barbara Lynch Ooh. for big patrons, and that was a really nice event to bring a number of um, big donors together. That it was delicious. It was. It was. <laughs> did she do Irish food? One of the food? perks. She, she did. It was oh. an Irish meal. One of the perks. What was it? 
Um, she, it was a, a beef meal with potatoes, of course. Nice. <laughs> um, and a lovely dessert and uh, good company. And it, they almost acted like an advisory board to, to us and went around the room and gave suggestions about how to market ourselves better and get the word about, out about our services. So those were two events. And then the third we had um, at, in Chestnut Hill, mm -hmm. we threw an event at St. Ignatius Church, a Phil Coulter concert. Uh, who is a, a famous Irish uh, musician and storyteller and singer. Uh, he, we brought him in from Ireland and he did a concert at St. Ignatius. So we had the whole Metro West area opening up, trying to get people involved in the center, even though we are you know, right now primarily Dorchester-based, Quincy, West Roxbury, Milton, that whole area. Um, it was an opportunity for other people to learn about what we're doing and then with the proceeds from those events, we're hoping to expand our programs beyond the uh, Middlesex and Suffolk counties. Okay. Um, tell me about the closing line in your mission statement, we are a parish without boundaries. Share your thoughts on that. Sure. Um, we are a parish without boundaries. We, we are an organization that is affiliated with a parish that is a community-based organization, but we really extend our services well beyond. And for the number of staff that we have and the, um, the income that we have from events and what, is, what the outflows are, we really touch a lot of people's lives. We have over a thousand people that we, we help annually mm. um, in one way or another, if it's employment or if it's bereavement issues, prison ministry, people in prison that need assistance to you know, keep the faith and keep on going. Um, every, everyone from, um, you know, we've got seniors and that are homebound and we have people who go to visit them. We have social workers. We also have um, religious who visit them as well for, for different purposes, you mm -hmm. know, if it's a spiritual reason or, or you know, potentially depression and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. We have Isolation. people really going, reaching out into the community and giving people the help that they need, especially when they are undocumented, when they don't have family in this country or they're alone or their spouse is per perhaps passed away or something. Can you talk a little bit more about the programming, maybe specifically about programming for older adults? Sure, we have um, one of the things in our senior program, senior citizen program, in, we've got two right now, but it'll, it will expand. We have a program in Brighton, mm -hmm. and we have a program in Dorchester for senior citizens, and we have uh, coffee mornings once a week in both places on different days, and we have speakers come in, and on certain occasions we will have um, we have a bus that was generously donated by the American Ireland Fund, so we can bus our seniors to events, to museums, to shows, to whatever, and we have a budget for all of this, and we also ask them to pay a portion of it, but we have it subsidized, subsidized and it works really well. We have also um, a, a monthly mass at Canton, in Canton at the Irish Cultural Center, okay. um, and what's really nice about the, the mass in um, Canton is that afterward they have a beautiful luncheon, very good food, and afterward, they have um, dancing. They have oh. Irish set dancing and a live band that plays. They have a raffle with baskets of goodies. This is every, every week? Month. Oh, once a month. Every month. So there's, yeah. you, you attend the mass, and mm -hmm. then they have this whole event and afterwards. It's, it's like it sells That's out. Awesome. I mean, it's, it's to, to capacity. It's just wonderful. And they again, we use our bus. We mm -hmm. bus people in from everywhere, and um, carpools are set up, and people bring you know friends and spouses. and. It's, so it's multi generational as well. It's mostly the scene. It's really mostly it's a senior older. thing. It's okay. a senior event. Um, but you know, they all dance with each other and they enjoy each other's company. And sometimes they take lay claim to certain tables to sit together. And yeah. it's it's great. It's a wonderful opportunity to really get out of the house and do something fun and enjoyable. And you know, the the people that we work with. Oftentimes they have um, adult children out of state, mm -hmm. and if we're working closely with them, trying to help them, we are in touch with those adult children, and we say, you know, we've got this great event coming up. We'll make sure your mother is invited to it, and that we'll pick her up and drop her off, and you know, things like that. So, so, uh, t so I know that you guys also have you visit homebound elders. Mm -hmm. How? Tell me a little bit about that, and if someone's interested in, I guess, becoming a. I don't even know what the word would be, a consumer, a client? I mean, what do you guys call them? Oh, sure. Call um, them? Um, you know, they're, they're a parish? There's uh, got to be a word for they that. They avail right? themselves of the, of the programs, yeah. you know. Um, they're not patients, they're not yeah, clients they're necessarily, not cli yep. but they're participants mm -hmm. in the program. 
Um, if, if anyone is interested in, in being involved and having someone come visit them or if they have a parent who might be alone or spending a lot of time alone and want someone to check in on them to see if they're okay and, you know, um, you know, even, you know, whether it's just someone to talk to, that's one, one thing. And then also, um, you know, we've got a social worker who is available to meet with people and, and assess situations, to, you know, if someone is depressed and needs to go on medication or see somebody or, you know, we've got, um, the, the suicide rate and the rate of depression and the rate of alcoholism mm -hmm. in the Irish community, you know, is, is pretty decent and we, we like to try to work on that as much as we can and have people that are uh, going out and helping people who are in those situations. Yeah. But one of the things that we're actually doing now that we're, we're expanding the program and I'm looking to, um, I've been meeting with the Archdiocese, we're, we're expanding a program idea to reach out to the younger, um, younger folks in their you know, teens um, to give them some substance abuse uh, counseling and um, lectures, opportunities, and use it as um, you know an opportunity to connect with the archdiocese a little bit more, and they're happy about that, so that we can almost um, form a, a pilot program among the youth in this population um, and provide services to them as well, so that it it can curtail it or nip it in the bud a little bit yeah. so that when, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, they're not one of those people alone, you know, with depression, drinking by himself or herself and, um, you know, really help people from the beginning and try to educate them. And Do you have to be Irish to uh, be, be a partake in any of these programs? And, and so how do you, um, I guess, what other eligibility is there and, and how does that get vetted? Mm -hmm. It, there's you don't have to be any particular okay. person, you know, <laughs> background, religion, or anything right. like that. Um, sometimes there might be a better alternative for someone if, if um, you know, if there's an international organization mm -hmm. or an organization that's particularly suited for their religion or whatever. We can help them with that. We don't turn people away when okay. they come to us. Yeah. We're not discriminating in any way. Um, but I think the majority of the people are Irish, mm -hmm. and they've. They've well, got, there's a community there, yeah, so they're got drawn brogues. to their community. Yeah, they've got brogues, they're affiliated with a parish, um, but they don't necessarily have to be, you know, every weekend churchgoers or anything like that. It's not, not like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what other programming do you have um, at the Irish Pastoral Center? I, I read somewhere that you match volunteers from Ireland for home visits. Talk, talk to me about that. Um, we, we, we match volunteers to assist with some of the programs. Okay. We really have qualified social workers and um, religious making the home visits. Oh, okay. They're the ones who, because they're trained. Yeah. And if there was anything that came up, then, you know, we, we, we need to have somebody trained to be able to handle it. But um, we have a lot of volunteers. We have a very small staff of, of about four full-time people, a handful of part-time people, and then 154 volunteers. Wow. So we have a huge volunteer population. There's a lot of volunteer management that's going on in the different departments. They are wonderful people. They care. Oftentimes, you know, they've got some connection to the, the people that we're serving mm -hmm. or they've been served and now they're giving back because they appreciate what we did for them. Um, they serve on our banquet committee. They, they do outreach for us. We have events for young families, um, like the Braintree Family Fun Day, where we have people wear their county sweaters or um, t-shirts from their different counties in Ireland, and ah. they have races against each other, family by family, county by county, um, things like that. I mean, it's it, we have such a great group of volunteers, really, that, really good group. That is really, that's really great. Um, is Dorchester and Brighton, are they just, uh, did you pick those two locations because there's such a density of Irish uh, people living in those areas or was it just tap and chance? I, you know, I think when it was initially started, it was, that was the reason. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm working with the Irish Consul General to find out where the uh, major um, pockets of Irish immigrants are mm -hmm. in Massachusetts so that we can figure out what their needs are in those locations and then we can have a, a rotating program for seniors that goes to these five different locations for example, and the same thing for 
the teens and adolescents. You as mentioned well. that, so this is part of the expansion plan. You mentioned, mm -hmm. okay, can you talk to us a little bit more about, so you're trying to expand into Massachusetts or further into Boston or just, I guess, tell me a little bit about we're that. We're expanding with, within what we have already. We're, we're making it bigger and better, mm -hmm. but then we're also reaching out deeper into the community, west to Worcester, you know, north past Lynn, um, south to the Cape, wow. everywhere. Um, and that's something that the Irish government is really excited about us doing as well because they, you know, they are here, they, their interest is Massachusetts, mm -hmm. not just Boston. Yeah. So eventually we'll be doing that too. 2015 is going to be a big year for us and we've done a lot of fundraising now. We'll continue to do that, but 2015 will be the year of expanding and broadening the programs and doing more with the collaboration of other organizations and the support of the Irish government and the Archdiocese of Boston. What do you think will limit uh, the expansion? Is it just funding or is it there's something else? I think, you know, at? funding is probably one of the biggest. <laughs> it is a big issue, <laughs> because right? Because you can't hire more people to, to do things yep. way out west and it takes time to drive and go north, south, east, west. And, and um, you know, so it's, I think funding is the biggest challenge. We do have a good core group of people who, who care. We have a lot of people who give a little bit and now we're trying to get people who, you know, banks and organizations and individuals, businesses to, to give bigger and, you know, more substantial amounts to make a difference. So we will be having all kinds of events um, that will not necessarily be fundraisers. They will be programs to help the community, like buying your first home, pension oh. planning, people who've got pensions coming to them from Ireland and pensions from the U.S., how to work that system. Um, Medicare and Medicaid, unraveling the mysteries of those things. <laughs> Good <Yeah>. luck. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> but um, but things like that to have events and programs where we educate people, have you know, seminars or or events where people can ask questions or work on on, a, on projects and and things with them. And then from there, um, we will get sponsors for those events, and those sponsors will help us fund more efforts. Nice. So if someone's interested in learning more about a program or mm -hmm. you know coming to the Pastoral Center, what's the best way for them to find out more? The best thing to do is to look at our website which is www.ipcboston.org and it's always .org. People forget sometimes that yeah. it's .com but it's, it's .org. Mm -hmm. um, and check out our website, see the things that we're doing. We've got a wonderful calendar of events for seniors and other events that we're doing. Um, and I would say, you know, if you'd like to speak with someone, uh, give us a call at 617-265-5300 and, you know, tell us what you're interested in. If you're interested in volunteering, that's wonderful. We always can use more volunteers. Um, we're looking for board members, too, mm -hmm. development of, board, um, of, of the board. Um, so if people have a, a background in accounting or finance or law or social work or, um, you know, if they've just got a a very strong interest in what we do, we would really welcome, you know, speaking with people about joining our board too. What's the commitment for the board? The board right now doesn't have a set financial commitment, okay. um, but they do have to go kind of through a, a check because we're affiliated with the Archdiocese mm -hmm. and the Irish government. They want to make sure that we're, you know, bringing people on board that are actually going to do something. Obvious, and, yeah. You know, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you always want some people on your board that are committed, is, exactly. right? And who are committed to assisting and helping and right. not just showing up once in a while. And we hope that, you know, whatever they're doing in their professional lives, that maybe we could get their their businesses on board to mm -hmm. help support us or be sponsors. Very nice. Uh, what big events do you have coming up in the next, uh, let's say, late November, December that, mm -hmm. you know, people might be interested in? Sure. The, the one main event that we still have left for this year is the annual banquet. It's a wonderful event at Florian Hall, November 15th, which is a Saturday night, a week from Saturday. Um, and it is uh, 6.30 p.m., beautiful event, um, music, um, wonderful food. Um, we're honoring Mickey Hart, who is the GAA um, Tyrone um, uh, number one manager in the, the history of Tyrone, Don Tyrone Donegal area okay. in Ireland, and he's very famous, and people are all excited to see him. He's coming over. We're also um, honoring Eugene O'Flaherty oh. as well um, from the 
the mayor's office, it's the Boston um, Council uh, Legal Council office, mm -hmm. and um, you know we'll have we'll have a, a number of speakers, but it, it's going to be a fun night, an interesting night, an opportunity to learn a little bit about what we're doing and have fun, just dance and listen to music and. Is the music Irish? Music is Irish. And yeah. do you have the Irish dancers? We we have some things in store. Oh, okay. For for the the crowd. We'll I love those Irish dancers. Yeah. There's uh, a group of young children that mm -hmm. I don't know where they're where they're taught, but we've had them come to our events and they do oh. the Irish step dancing, mm -hmm. and they're just little they're little girls. They're so um, cute. Yeah, they're so adorable, and it's just what a workout that is. Definitely. I mean, it's just and it's just so nice to see. Um, so nice to see that that the culture of, of any culture, whether it's Irish or Hispanic or whatever, of, pe of the young people keeping that up, I think it's so beautiful. Definitely. Um, so if you can believe it, um, we're almost out of time. Wow. I know. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> um, but maybe there's something you want to leave our audience with about why they should contact you, and and um, you know, again, just leave them the website. So. Sure. There are a lot of organizations that help immigrants. There are a lot of organizations that help Irish people. There are a lot of Irish organizations. I'm on the board of a couple of them and I've been working with them for a long time. Um, the thing that is unique about this organization is that it's the only social services organization that is dedicated to the Irish immigrant community and anyone else who really needs us. But there are organizations that do a lot of you know, immigrant work for, for everyone. Um, but this is targeted toward the Irish community and it is funded by the Irish government as part of their taking care of the, the diaspora, the, the, mm -hmm. the, stud, the, the um, Irish nationals abroad, and it is part of the Archdiocese of Boston. A lot of people don't realize that because people really weren't talking about it that much for a number of years. And we also didn't have an executive director for two years. Wow. I'm the first one in, in two years. So we're really at a crossroads right now. And I think they're... I think the or, the organization. I know the organization is going to um, just do so well exponentially um, and make a real difference in the community. So I hope that people listening will will understand that and and you know come and and see what we're all about. Be a volunteer. Come to a, a the annual banquet. Come to an event that we'll hold uh, in the winter and the spring. Um, if you have ideas about things, you know we're happy to to do that as well, to listen to people and, and collaborate. Well, best of luck with um, with everything, with the expansion. I think that is just, I think it's great. Um, Thank I, you. you. know, I think the, the work that you guys do there is amazing, and um, I wish you all the best in the expansion. In the next event, I'm sure it's going to be a ton of fun. Thank and, you know, feel free to uh, invite us at the Elderly Commission to maybe, you know, we could maybe take some pictures, put it in the magazine. I think it'd be great. a lot of fun for people to see that. Sometimes I think it's, you know, we can sure. talk about it. Sometimes it's hard for people to see mm -hmm. the activity that you do. Um, yeah, so I'd love to. I'd love to check Good, it out. We will. We'll but uh, again, one more time, the website is www.ipcboston.org. And if you miss that, obviously call the Elderly Commission, and we connect. We can connect you. So thank you so much Great. for coming today and talking to us about it. Thank you so um, much. And we'll have to see you again. Thanks, Tula. Thank you for watching Seniors Count, brought to you by Mayor Martin J. Walsh and our Commissioner Emily Shea. To contact us, please call 617-635-4366 or the Mayor's 24-hour hotline at 617-635-4500. You can email us at elderly at boston.gov or you can find us on Facebook. See you next time. I see skies of blue and clouds of white bright blessed days dark sacred nights and I think to myself what a wonderful world I think to myself